Oh, good morning. Welcome to the Arodi station, where we make your date one you'll never forget. How can I help you today? An event tonight. Good to know. A rush order will cost slightly above the standard fee, but we'll sort out the price later. I have several of our ladies, or husbandos, whichever you prefer, waiting to give you the night of your life. But first, I need to know a few things about your preferences and the event itself. Possibly the context of your need to hire someone to accompany you. Well, yes, we're a very specialized service. Other agencies might give it the name escorting, but we prefer professional companionship. It might be noteworthy to add that while our employees do not perform sensual acts, they have been trained highly to ensure they can join the conversation at any level of status. So no matter if it's a gathering with some friends, or a high society wine tasting, or anything in between, I can assure you that you've come to the right address. Now, we have a checklist, but since it's a pretty slow day and nobody else is here, I could simply ask all the questions and give a few personal recommendations, if you would be okay with that. Great, let's see. Okay, is this date for you or for someone you know? Mm -hmm. For you. And what's your name? Mm -hmm. Great. Now let's talk about the event. Is it a social or work-related event? And what type of work-related event is it? Mm. Okay, so you're looking to hire a date for yourself for the office party. Since everyone's bringing their partner, you want to hire our services because you don't have a partner yourself yet, and because you don't want your workmates to think that you're always alone or that you don't know how to date anyone. Am I correct? Just as I thought. It's not a shame, though. It's quite common. Some people prefer to be lonesome, some just get social anxiety, and other people just have bad luck when it comes to dating. Would you describe yourself as shy or confident? Mm. Okay. And would you prefer a date who is equally shy or more confident than you? Okay. A confident date for a shy person. Is there a possibility that there will be more events at which you would want our employee to accompany you? Or is this an isolated event? A long-term agreement, then. Let's see who is available for that. Okay. I have some listings, but I would need additional information to find the best options. Could you describe yourself in bigger detail for me? That way I can have a general idea of your person to see who would best fit you and your preferences. Okay... Mm. 
Mhm. Right. So, based on that information, I've got a list of five people that might interest you. I've got profile pictures for all of them for visual aid. So, let's see who fits your needs. This is Jessica. She's 28 years old, has had a short career as an actress and studied drama. She has less formal education than some of the people on this list, but our programs ensure that she'll be up to date on any subject of conversation. She won't have in-depth knowledge in many fields, but she has watched almost every animated show, sitcom, and movie she could get her hands on. She describes herself as a hopeless romantic and a loud-mouthed pop expert. She is likely to overtake most conversations, allowing you to simply stand next to her, smile and nod whenever appropriate for the entire night. She likes to dress up, so she's more than likely to be overdressed for the occasion, which can be a point of concern for a shy partner, as she'll be drawing eyes from all over the room. Her personal text goes as follows. Hey there, I guess I'm supposed to make a sales pitch for my selfie, but I'm not very good at that. What I can tell you is that if you hire me, I will make sure you don't need to worry about anything. I can cook if you want, but if you're looking for a movie diet, I'm definitely your gal. I also love to dance, and anything romantic is amazing. Hope you pick me. Yes, she wrote it in an accent. Jessica sometimes likes to play pranks. She does not have such an accent as far as I know, but she can definitely be described as an occasional prankster. Would she be to your liking? Good idea. We still have more people on the list after all. The next person on the list is Eve. Eve is more educated, no offense to Jessica, of course. She has a degree in both mathematics and literature which makes her a much more engaging conversationalist at high-class events that some would describe as fancy. Her age of 41 does not diminish her beauty in the slightest, as you can see. And aside from being more extroverted, she also deems herself more dominant. She dresses more modestly than Jessica, which means she won't draw as much attention, but from reviews, it appears she's also more adept at the reading from social cues from the customer. If you started panicking, for example, she would be more likely than most others to excuse herself and her date for a moment, allowing you some time to regain your composure. She's also described as more caring and nurturing than most of our employees, Although, this does mean she'll sometimes ignore customer requests in favor of something she deems better or healthier for them. An example would be that when one customer asked to go out for fast food, Eve cooked him dinner instead. This might not seem terrible, but this does mean that she is willing to ignore or alter specific requests from you. Her personal text is this. Hello, dear. If you're looking for someone who will take care of you for some time, or someone who will make sure you're punished if you're naughty, I'm the woman for the job. Not a girl, a woman. So do make sure you can handle me before you order me. Nope, not joking about the dominant thing. She can be intense. She likes to be called motherly but I think an overly dominant cougar is a better description. In case you prefer men, it looks like we also have one available for you. He's called Patrick. People often describe him as a definition of an alpha male, but he actually has a dual nature. On outside, he might be a muscular stallion with a deep voice and a bit of a dominant personality, which some people find intimidating. But on the inside, he's actually quite delicate and emotional in a positive way, 
and he really cares for whoever hires him. He's just showing off the alpha side in public because he's not really self-confident. The main reason why he's not hired often is, again, that some people might be scared of him, but also because he's a bit of a nerd. If you bring up a topic of video games, he can talk about them for hours, which practically isn't that good, especially when he starts talking with your workmates about these first-person shooters he played recently, boring them to death and completely forgetting about you. Sometimes he's also stubborn and hard to stop, again thinking an alpha male like him should be the only one controlling him, which in fact isn't true. So I would suggest hiring him only for specific occasions. He doesn't have a personal text. He wrote one, but the company felt that the description he wrote wasn't matching his true personality, so we deleted it to avoid clickbait and negative reviews. He hasn't written a new personal text since. Our company does also offer fanboys, but I don't have any available for you at the moment. You won't believe how popular they are, and not just for naughty reasons. Fourth and last, I'd like you to consider Maureen. She's a bit of a curveball, so bear with me. Maureen has a more demure personality, not quite as outgoing as the other three. She does, however, have a few special qualities that make me think she could be a good fit. You see, she's a wallflower. On her own, she's shy and quite hard to get out of her bubble. But when she has a date that she really likes, she blooms up quite nicely and becomes a much more outgoing girl. She's very caring, but not overbearing. She has something to say on most topics of conversations, as you've come to expect, but she specializes in conversations focused on love. She has done quite a bit of research on the phenomenon, and remarks that she's got her resignation letter ready in the event that she falls in love with her client. When it comes to education, she has an artist's degree, often making paintings and sculptures in her spare time. A lot of descriptions rank her as somewhat below the average of our employees, but once in a while we get such a shining review that we can't help but keep her. Maureen's a bit of a gamble to hire. Should she like you, it's likely that she's the best option in the whole catalog. If she doesn't, she's below average, but she will of course get the job done. We have never had a single cancellation of an order date, so rest assured that she won't leave in the middle of the party. She hasn't written a personal text yet, which is something I've been bothering her to do for quite some time now, but it can't be helped. Her reviews do describe she's cute in their opinion when she's not enjoying the client, but the ones that do catch her eye seem to find her outgoing, enthusiastic and, and I quote, wonderfully engaging. Apparently she went a long way to ensure that she knew everything she could know about one of her customers who requested a second date with her, following them on social media, asking a lot of questions about their personal preferences and more. Yeah, that's all. Who do you think is the best fit? Uh, yes, I said there were five listings, so yes, there is a fifth name too, but she's, uh, well, she's not someone you would want to hire for yourself, unless you're, uh, kinky. Very kinky. Melody is an, uh, an aggressive lover. She suffers from a mental disorder that causes her to quickly develop obsessions with her lovers, which has triggered on a client before, and she's been on non-active since. We could technically arrange for her to be brought back from the mental institute she's currently in, but really, she's too intense. If you do choose her, then you can't tell anyone that I let you read her file and any cost from possible crimes she commits will be added to your bill. Well, she's done quite a lot in the past. Before we knew it was her doing it, she racked up a long list of charges. 
arson, attempted uh, disappearance of victims, kidnapping, aggravated assault, non-consensual intimacy, drugging, vandalism, stalking, and last but not least, their stealing. But when we found out, we ended up with a client who was tied up in a basement somewhere, and her attempting to uh, make someone disappear, probably client's friend. Some organization swooped in to bring her to a mental hospital before she went to prison, which is why she's technically still available. But I sincerely recommend that you don't hire her. In any case, you've heard and seen all of the options. What do you think is the best date for you? I see. Very interesting choice. Alright, that's pretty much it for now. From now on, the person you decided to hire will have 15 minutes to confirm their availability. When it's confirmed, then all you need to do is pay for our services and provide the address and the time of the event happening. So, until then, you can wait outside, sit down, have a coffee, whatever you would like. I will call you in when I get the confirmation from your date. Either way, thank you for choosing the Aurotis Agency and our services. I hope the office party goes well, and that you will enjoy your partner's company.